Hey guys, uh, Tyler from Makeoscopy here. Uh, so recently I made this thing, and you're about to see what it is. Um, it's actually, as the title suggests, an oscilloscope using the Arduino. Now, right now it's actually playing like a really low hertz. It's only about 30 hertz. Um, not really audible to the human ear. But, I mean, it's a start, and it can go, I think, it can, it can read up to about 300 hertz. Um, which really, really isn't that fast, but it's a start. It's pretty cool. So basically what I have here is I've got a touch screen, uh, LCD screen. I'm going to integrate that into the code later. But right now I've got the screen, and basically what it's doing is it's using the analog input, and it's reading the fluctuations on the analog input. Now, the thing about... Um, and the analog input is that it can only measure between 5 volts and 0 volts. And with any speaker system that you have, there's it's probably going to go between like 2 volts to negative 2 volts, which is below what the analog input can read. And we're saying like what is negative 2 volts? Well, it's basically it's it's voltage it, but it's negative. I don't really know. You're going to have to look it up. But basically, that's why um, speakers don't have polarity to them. I mean, they do, but they really don't. Like, this little guy, you've got the little red and the black wire, but there's really no difference whatsoever in how you hook it up. So basically, you've probably already seen here, but this frame rate is really slow, and that's because this touch screen right here is actually... 320 by 240 uh, resolution, which is really nice for the Arduino. Um, so, what I've been using before this is I've actually, um, I've had this thing. It's fairly big. Let me get it. Um, get out of the way. Um, basically, it's this massive monstrosity, and it's got video out. Um... And it's called the TV Out Library. It's, you know, it's okay of a library, but the Arduino really can't handle this sort of stuff. It's a black and white mono input, output. And um, you can get up to, I think, like 108 by 96 resolution. It's really bad. And um, basically, you've got your audio analyzer here, uh, which is what I'm using on my other Soulscope, which as the audio input right there, but you can also use a, um, you know, digital voltage and ground. And then I added this analog resistance thing in there so you can just look at the resistance of different, um, different resistors and stuff, and you've got, like, zoom and scanning speed, which really was like a, it's a joke, really, I mean, it's terrible. And you can switch between analog resistance and digital, got this nice little switch here. But yeah, that's kind of behind me now because I've got this little guy way faster even though the screen has got a really, really good resolution to it. It's using um, pin 13, 12, 11, and 10. And the touch screen is using the first four of the analog inputs, which kind of sucks considering that now I can only have a two input oscilloscope, but if I don't use the touch screen, I can have up to five inputs on my oscilloscope, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, I'll have the code down below, but the one thing that I was talking about I'm going to get back to earlier was it can only read negative 2 volts. So how did I step that up so it can read the sine wave, the perfect sine wave? Because obviously the trough of the wave is going to be like negative 2. How you do that? Well, I've got this little circuit at the bottom, and you see you've got a capacitor and uh, two resistors. So basically what's that doing? It's called biasing the analog input. So basically you've got one resistor and then I'm going to do this for simplicity's sake. I'm just going to get a random resistor right here. Really you'd want to have two of the same resistor but you're going to connect them at the middle and then you'll grab a capacitor and you'll have the capacitor one of the leads are hooked up to uh, the middle right there, and this goes to ground, this goes to positive. I think I actually, yeah, I've got this capacitor on backwards. 
whoops, um, capacitor right there. So you have your input right there, 5 volts, ground, and then this is where your analog input goes. Um, this is called biasing the analog input, so basically what it does is it makes the wave go higher than it normally would. So instead of oscillating between 2 and negative 2, it'd go between, um, what's that, 4 and 0. Um, so yeah, the, the, what I, from what I can gather, the farther, the higher up these things are in the ohms range, and the higher this is, well actually this needs to be about 10 UF, um, these, the higher they are, the more, um, this is basically just a voltage divider, um, but the higher it is, the higher, uh, voltages you can read. I wouldn't recommend using this with like an amplifier since the Arduino can only handle 5 volts and you don't really want to blow it out, but I think I think on the safe side you could probably have like up to maybe 9 volts. I haven't tested it out yet. But yeah, I mean it's a pretty nice screen. Uh I got it from a Radio Shack that's closing in my area, which is really sad, but you know, use what you can. Um, I'll post the, vi the code down below. Uh, I've got two versions of it. There's one that kind of uses vector graphics. This is what I'm using now. Uh, I'm going to try and implement that in so I can zoom in on the wave, especially when it gets to like, here, let me show you. When it gets to like 300 hertz, you see it gets really weird, so you have to, you have to get it really small so you can view the wave properly. Um... I'll also link in the online wave generator to tone generator so you can, you know, look at your waves. I mean, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good wave generator. I mean, the sine waves are awesome looking. Um, so are the triangle waves. But, you know, sawtooth, not, I mean, that's pretty good. But, ugh, look at that square wave. It's barely even square. How could they do this to us? But, um... Yeah, I'll link in the code. I'll link in a schematic. Actually, I'll probably overlay in a schematic. Overlay schematic here. There you go. Um, so yeah, I get the TFT touchscreen uh, from Seed Studio. I got it for twenty-eight bucks. Nice Arduino, little patched-in job right there, and I'll run it off a nine volt, and you're good. So yeah, uh, see you next time.